Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts. Story number two. <laughs> We're dealing with the demonic. We're dealing with the authority that the name of Jesus has over any demonic attack. Do you hear me? Yeah. The name of Jesus is powerful. Now listen to this. I was in my living room. I had a relative who was not born again. But this lady was in the middle of a separation with her husband. A marriage of 28 years. She was seething with anger. She was emotionally broken. She was torn. She was hurt. You know how it is when you've given your all into a marriage and it turns out toward the end you find out you've been played. Well, he, she, she wasn't being played from the beginning. It started happening toward the end. And she realized there were third parties involved. It wasn't just her and him. So, unfaithfulness, infidelity, whatever you want to call it, it broke her heart. Now, all of a sudden, I'm in my living room. And I've been praying for her over the last month or so during this separation period. He was in the process of moving out. And uh, while I was praying, I felt this evil. Now, this was, I don't even know what I was praying at the time when I felt the evil, but I just started feeling this evil. And I don't remember if I was praying or not, but I know I felt this evil in my house. Well, I'm like, what's that evil doing in my house? I'm scared. Now, I know the authority I have in the name of Jesus. However, I've only been saved two months. Two months. Not two years. Two months. I'm still a baby Christian. All of a sudden, this evil comes in my living room. I'm in there by myself. Nobody's at home with me. My father's in the hospital. My sister's at her house. My friends are at their house. My nieces and nephews. Nobody's with me. I'm all alone, baby. Me and a demon. An uninvited demon. Trespassing. Now let me tell you what happened. I'm not sleeping now. This ain't a twilight sleep. Mama Sita's wide awake. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden now, I find myself really tripping because I'm telling God, I'm scared. Oh, I was scared. I was petrified. I'm thinking this thing is coming to hurt me. It's getting stronger and stronger. And the evil atmosphere was permeating the whole house. It just, oh, it was, the, oh, it was a horrible experience. I'm a baby. I'm scared to death, you know, and not an age. I was 27, but I was a baby Christian, two months old in the Lord. <clears throat> yeah. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And what I end up having to try was I sat there and said, Lord, help me. Don't let me get hurt. Don't let that demon hurt me. Whatever you do, don't let that demon hurt me. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus. So then it started occurring to me. Now, here's the trip. I'm watching TV, right? Watching TV. And while I'm watching TV, while I'm watching TV, I mean, not watching TV. Ah, sorry, the phone distracted me. I'm looking around. I could see, I could see where the demon was headed. And I'm saying to myself, oh my goodness, Lord, don't let this thing hurt me. I really thought it was coming to do me much harm. But then I started rebuking it. This is what I said. 
I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave my house in the name of Jesus. Leave my property in the name of Jesus. Never return in the name of Jesus. And I just kept repeating that over and over and over. But then the Lord began to lay a burden on my heart for my sister. Now, you know what time it was? 5.30 in the morning. When I said watch TV, I was watching the clock because I, I knew I had to go to bed soon because I had to go to church the next morning. But I was still in my party clock, so I, I was just now starting to get sleepy. But let me tell you, 5.30 in the morning, for some reason, I looked at the clock right at 5.30 when this demon showed up. I'm rebuking him. I'm rebuking him over and over and over. And the feeling of the evil is starting to get smaller, smaller. It's waning. It's dissipating. And I'm think, thinking, okay, I'm safe. It's going to leave me alone. But then this burden hits me about my sister. Now, I cover everybody in the family. I go down, boom, 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 boom. Lord, protect this one, protect that one. Don't let the demon hurt that one. Don't let the demon come near. But I got on my sister, and I could not stop. And I kept saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I, I was like, Lord, please, whatever you do, don't allow this demon to mess with my sister. Please don't let it hurt her. Now I'm done with the demon, and I'm praying for my sister. Now I done got all over my sister's thing. Lord, you know how she's hurting. Whatever you do, Lord, please don't allow her. I'm crying my eyes out. Lord, please don't allow her to commit, to not commit. Don't allow her to do anything to harm herself. Don't allow her to self-destruct with all this emotional trauma that she's going through, Lord. Please have mercy, protect her, bless her, keep her. I'm going through all of this. And finally, I can't keep my eyes open, and I feel like, okay, we're done. The prayers are answered. I got to go to bed. I hit the sack. I have a dream now. Now, in this dream, you're going to trip. You're going to trip. I dreamt that my nephew called me. When he called me, he says, Aunt Pat. Could you come over right now? I said, what's wrong? He said, it's mama. She tried to commit suicide. That dream, oh my goodness, let me tell you. I'm all of a sudden now, I'm in her, I'm in the front of her yard, and the police are there, and I'm entering, like I'm from the vantage point of the ceiling. I'm over their heads as they're walking. I'm like looking down at them, following them into the kitchen. And as soon as I got into the kitchen to look at my sister, I woke up. I never did see her. I woke up. I jumped on that phone because my sister was an early bird, so I knew she was awake. Boop, 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 boop. Evelyn, are you okay? I'm fine. Okay, bye. Now, I go back to sleep. I get up, start to get ready for church. I call her again. Are you okay? I'm fine. Click. Okay, I'm like, bye, click. Okay. I get to church. Now it's about 10 something going on 11. Are you okay? Okay, who told you? Who told me what? Oh, stop it. You're supposed to be this born-again Christian. D doesn't the Bible say thou shalt not lie? I'm like, yeah. Well, then tell the truth. Who told you? I have no idea what you're talking about, girl. I said, now, if you wait a minute, I'll tell you why. I called. And I told her about the demon showing up at 5.30 in the morning. I told her about the dream of her son calling me with tears in his eyes, begging me to get there right away because you tried to commit suicide. I, I mean, you know, she did. She tried to. I, I told her all of this. Now, when I get through this, nothing, 
but silence on the other line. Nothing but silence. And I'm thinking to myself, did she hang up? You know, she didn't like me talking too much about the Lord back then. It was very offensive to her, and she didn't want me to get on this holier-than-thou kick. So I'm saying, hello, are you there? <clears throat> are you there? Hello? Hello? Are you there? And then I start hearing this. <laughs> oh, Patty. Oh, Patty. And I'm, I'm really tripping now. What the heck is going on? She begins to tell me through her tears that at 5.30 in the morning, she looked at the clock. And she started crying. She said, I can't take this anymore. It hurts too much. I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I can't take this kind of pain. And a voice spoke to her, plain as a crystal bell. And it said, you don't have to. Just end it. And my sister, all of a sudden, feels a coldness come over her. And all of her emotional ties just leave her body. And she feels like a non-living entity. And she calculates her demise. And she's figuring out how to do it. She's looking around the house and going through the drawers and trying to get this thing together so she can work it out before the kids get up. She wanted to already be dead. She said after about 15, 20 minutes of digging and looking, all of a sudden, it felt like a football player tackled her in her chest. And all these emotions, her love for her kids, her love for her husband even, the hurt, the emotional pain, all of it hit her like a ton of bricks. Bam! And all of a sudden, she was a living entity again. She was human with a heart. And she saw a vision. I mean, God gave her a vision. And she saw her kids coming into the kitchen, finding her dead body and freaking out. And she bawled at what damage that would have done. And she told me, she said, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I know that would have messed my kids up for life. I couldn't do that to them. And I said very calmly, I said, Evelyn, God saved your life last night. Click! And I went on into the church. Now, I did it like that because I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what battle I was fighting. But God knew. And he used dum diddy dum dum to fight off a demon of suicide. And I had no clue. The dream I had was God's way of explaining to me, this is what that was about. And here's your confirmation, conversation with my sister. You can't play with the demonic. If you, in, if you encounter one, fight it with everything you have and pray to God while you're doing it. Because the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, will lead and guide and navigate you to hit the bullseye, even when you don't even know there's something to hit. I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know what I was fighting, didn't know why. But the bullseye was hit, and my sister's life was saved. She lived another 18 years after that. 18 or 28 more years after that, 28 more years. So I say to tell you, Jesus, the name of Jesus has power, baby. Don't play it cheap and do me a big favor. Don't play him cheap either, okay? He's not a toy. He's not a mamby-pamby little, little uh, pushover. He's got power. All authority 
was given to him.